How hard is this to believe that this was some type of ceremonial event that's taking place during the World Fair when we see the Olympics, man? Why do I say that? Mo Malek? What is that? I don't even know what that is. Is that another name for Baal? Let's look it up. Name of a god that people used to to in the Bible. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. Amy Grove, have you been there for the ceremony with the cremation of care? Uh, uh, frankly, that's, uh, that, uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Behind closed doors. <laughs> In who was actually able to sneak in. However, the Sumerians described two suns. The one that we see shining in the day and its nocturnal counterpart that shone during the night. The first day of the week was dedicated to the brighter sun and the last day of the week that was called the evil day was dedicated to the black sun. You better lock in and buckle up, bucko! You're in for another creepy and scary TikTok reaction video. You want to be careful on these creepy, disturbing, strange, weird TikTok videos because they might keep you up the whole night and change your entire reality. If you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you're new around here, I got so many other bangers you can come and watch. We do this daily. And remember, these videos are for entertainment purposes only. It's up to you and me to separate fact and fiction and do our own research on everything. Without further ado, let's dive into these waters. Uh, I've heard uh, from people in the Pentagon that the buzzword in the, in the secret of secrets in the Pentagon is uh, the Sumerian gods are returning. And that's what they're referring to, is that whole area uh, that uh, Peter Wow. Said. Can you repeat that again, just in case anybody missed it? The well, buzzword uh, in... in the Pentagon, and the, you know, the military circles that are in the know about the cover-up here, um, the, they kind of, in whispered tones, talk about the return of the Sumerian gods. And they're talking about the uh, what we would call aliens or fallen angels returning uh, into the Middle East, uh, into old Sumer area. The Anunnaki. Could be. These are the footprints that were left behind after the Red Sea crossing. What's so interesting about this discovery is that the footprints appear to be solidified in the seabed, along with rock-hard sand that has actually melted and fused together, with some archaeologists even comparing it to glass as it's become so brittle. This aligns with the biblical narrative in Exodus 14, where it describes God as a pillar of fire. The intense heat from the fire could potentially explain how the footprints became fossilized, preserving this moment in history as evidence of the miraculous crossing. Some researchers also point to the fact that this area, Nueva Beach, has long been identified as the crossing site due to the discovery of an underwater land bridge beneath the Red Sea, suggesting a possible route for a mass crossing. Not only that, there are claims of chariot wheels and human remains found on the seafloor, adding to the supporting evidence. With all these discoveries, as well as the solidified footprints in the area, has led many to believe this is where the Red Sea crossing actually took place. These are the footprints that were left behind after the Red Sea cross. That is fascinating, but there's also that theory that what if the Mississippi was actually uh, the real Nile? I mean, could that be where they were crossing, or am I getting that totally confused? The Red Sea is completely different from the Nile. I don't know, but where would the Red Sea be in America is my question. Maybe we can look it up and see. People are saying Arizona is... Uh, Egypt or was the original Egypt or new Egypt however you want to word it so what's really going on here what do we really know about California and why do all these ancient maps put the Red Sea next to this island is America the true old world What do we really know about California? So, is the Red Sea before you get to California? That's interesting. Let's find out how effective they've been in distorting the truth.
Oh, let me write that name down so we can dig off deep because is there a possibility the Red Sea is right before you get to California? Would that explain why it's so dried up near Las Vegas and stuff? What happened there? I don't know, but let me find my pen. This is interesting. The Red Sea in California? Do you guys know anything about this? Drop it down in the comments below. We need information. I believe the story goes that Moses has parted the Red Sea. Like, so he split this somewhere to go into California or was he leaving California? Famine was so severe that there was no food anywhere in the people of Egypt and Canaan Can Canaan became weak with hunger. They bought corn. Joseph collected all the money and took it to the palace when all the money in Egypt was in Canaan was spent. And I also heard that there's no corn. The only place you can get corn is in America. I don't know. Did that make sense, guys? After the arrival of Europeans in 1492, Spanish settlers consumed mad Mazai and explorers and traders carried it back to Europe and introduced it to their countries. Curious that Joseph is stockpiling corn in Egypt when it's over 2000 years later before corn is introduced to Egypt. Alright, he said, let's check out his video on Babylon. Why not? Was Babylon truly lost? I want y'all to check out some of these pictures. Let me know what you Now look at this promenade. Beautiful, beautiful architecture. Look at the craftsmanship. I mean, it's just stunning. Perfectly built. Everything. Gorgeous, right? You get to Ishtar there. Look at those columns. No electricity, no wheel. You know, supposedly primitive built architecture here, and it just doesn't fit what we were taught. The first time electricity. Did you see that giant Ferris wheel move real quick? Let me go back. I'm gonna let the video play, but man, that's important, man. The first time. You saw that thing go like that? That was a giant Ferris wheel. That was like the size of a bus. So the fact that they had something powering that strong, what type of energy, what type of generator could power something like that? That's something to think about. Electricity was used here. And check out all this belly dancing, right? Typical Babylon, Babylonian behavior. Um, look at that plaza, it's gorgeous. And then again, the, you know, Gate of Ishtar, Temple to Marduk, Mars, another view of it. There you got your 100 foot tall golden idol, goddess, right there, fully equipped with a fiery furnace. Pause to read that, it's crazy. Gate of Ishtar. And then of course, you know, you wouldn't be Babylon. You gotta have Mol Moloch uh, offerings, we'll say. Crazy man, these people are nuts. What's wrong with them? Here's more of it. You know, big old crowd of people doing this. You know, the Babylonian spirit for sure. Yeah, what if this were in the United States? Wouldn't that be crazy, right? All this idol worship and you know, mock offerings. Look at all those people there. Crazy, crazy celebration. Okay, and of course you got Baal making his appearance. Whatever, they got, you know, the full pantheon of deities. Weird dancing, you know, weird stuff going on. Look at that. Kind of like collab. I don't know what it is. Never seen anything like it around some deity like that. Oh, we got your cowboy here dancing around with his hat on. <laughs> now, uh, what if... That was Hebrew, guys. Did you catch that? They had, they got Baal, 
breathing smoke with Hebrew in the back. What are they working on? That's disturbing. Oh, well, we got your cowboy here dancing around with his hat on. <laughs> now, uh, what if I were to tell you guys that this was not some Babylonian movie, you know, mock Babylonian movie thing or something like that, or like a festival for Babylon? No, this is nothing like that. What if I said it was in the United States? That was 19, 1893 in Chicago for the World's Fair Expo. Now look, these are it's premier of Tesla's electricity there. We won't even get into the infrastructure or how he did it. And these are also from Chicago. Look, look, it looks like the, you know, hate group there. But uh, all these deities being worshipped, these are all, this is all footage from Chicago, 1893. And uh, if you don't know much about Babylon, this is kind of what's been passed down through history and artist renditions of whatnot. And in the in the a biblical account, Nebuchadnezzar builds a 100-foot golden statue. And what do we see here at the 1893 World Fair, right in the center of the you know plaza court, which you know they were famous for as well. But a 100-foot golden deity statue. And the crazy thing is, the bottom of that statue actually opens up, and there's a furnace inside and the top of the head opens up to make a chimney and uh, you know school told us these are paper mache buildings right for the fair they built these in like six months out of paper mache um which is clearly not true because some of them they after the fact decided to keep and uh they still stand today so really mean that there's your uh, propaganda for you we know when it came from at least before then and then bonus here i posted another video on this but check this out dude the Book of Jasher says it takes a year to get supplies up. It's a three-day uh, walk around the perimeter of the uh, structure. Now, this is on uh, Google Earth. And uh, the crazy thing is, is this is a Louis Babel Ecological Reserve in uh, Canada, Montreal. Now, going two and a half miles an hour, if we walked, it'd be 50 hours walking, 16 hours sleep, two hours rest a day. That'd give you exactly three days. Exactly. Let me know what y'all think. How hard is this to believe that this was some type of ceremonial event that's taking place during the World Fair when we see the Olympics, man? All of us seen the ceremonies in Olympics. We seen the ceremonies at CERN. So how hard is it actually to believe that they did this type of ceremony at the World Fair? But the fact that they had Hebrew Hebrew writing behind that wild bull or whatever that was that uh bay Al statue that's wild that's definitely disturbing your thoughts below malak how do i say that mo malek what is that i don't even know what that is is that another name for bay Al? let's look it up Mile up. It's spelled M O L O C H. Malak. All right, I found something. This looks crazy. Some of you have asked me this question. Mul is a commonly recognized name of a god that people used to burn their to in the Bible. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. But who was he really? Now the word Moloch is actually a combination of two Hebrew words, Melech meaning king and Boshet meaning shame. And the Hebrews actually would combine the names of Canaanite gods with other Hebrew words that put them to shame or belittle them. It's also how Astarte became Ashtoreth. Now, most people assume that Moloch is Baal, but Baal itself isn't the name of a god it is a general term for any god or ruler like saying lord so just like baal is associated with multiple different gods moloch is also associated with multiple different gods so ashtaroth was his consort but look at this moloch was found all over the place in north africa with these different engravings later was renamed as Kronos and went to Greece where he eventually became
Kronos, the father of Zeus. And since Baal was used in reference to several different gods, he also became what was Zeus. So Molech and Baal eventually became known as the Greek deities. Now, this goes back to what I said about all religions coming from one place, the Tower of Babel, where the Bnei Elohim, those angelic heavenly beings, came down to the Tower of Babel and the people were divided amongst those 70 Bnei Elohim. All of this, of course, happened in Mesopotamia, where the Canaanite gods are from. As the worship of these gods spread, their names changed, but they are all the same gods, all the same religions, and they all came from one place. So this points to not only the accuracy of the Bible, but that these are real entities and people are having real religious experiences. The difference being, these were created beings and there is only one Father God. Moloch was an ancient Canaanite deity, often depicted as a bronze, bull-headed idol with outstretched hands over a fire, usually associated with the practice of sacrifice, although this interpretation remains controversial. While some scholars argue that no bull-headed Phoenician god was known to exist, the sun god was often represented in accordance to the current zodiac age, which 4,000 years ago was Taurus, the bull. According to legend, the statue was hollow with a lit flame inside, and while the name Moloch was traditionally regarded to mean king, we must look to the Sumerians to understand its correct astrotheological context. The ancient Sumerians were the first academically recognized astronomers. They were credited with creating the first historical record of the zodiac and used the seven non-fixed celestial objects to develop the seven-day week, the five visible planets to the naked eye, plus the sun and the moon. The first day of the week, Sunday, was dedicated to the sun, and the last day of the week, Saturday, was also dedicated to the sun. Of course, Saturday was named after Saturn. However, the Sumerians described two suns, the one that we see shining in the day, and its nocturnal counterpart that shone during the night. The first day of the week was dedicated to the brighter sun, and the last day of the week, that was called the evil day, was dedicated to the black sun. In ancient Mesopotamia, the Magi, from where we get the term magician from, regarded the planet Saturn as the night sun and deemed it to be black, or the sun's alchemical shadow, its polar solar opposite. This ancient Babylonian description of Saturn as the black star stretched down to the Greeks and Hindus, particularly around 700 BC, and should be considered in a symbolic and mythological rather than literal context. The Greeks refer to Saturn, the Roman god of agriculture, as Kronos, who in mythology eats his 12, the 12 titans, which represent the 12 solar months or the 12 zodiacal houses of the sun. Kronos would then vomit them up again, signifying creation, destruction, and rebirth, as Saturn was associated with cycles of time and seasons. While it's true that Saturn was associated with death, this should also be regarded in the context of a cyclical harvest, the opposite of spring, part of the solar year. El, Bel, Kronos, Elohim, and other designations are names of Saturn. Bel, in the reasoning of the sacred mysteries, was both Saturn and Sol. Bel is the Syrian Kronos, the name being derived from Karen, to shine. Corona, coronate, coronal, coronium, chromosphere, crown, are all derived from the word chronos and are references to the solar, light, or sun rays. Only a lot of people don't know that abortion is a ritual. And after you complete that ritual, there is a spirit that's attached to you. After all, whether you want to admit it or not, you are Spiritually, that's And there is a demon specifically associated with That demon is Moloch. Now the name Mola can be interpreted as the personified ruler of shameful sacrifice. And when people do rituals for Mola, or they trying to conjure him up or make deals with him, people say homie. They also do ritual prostitution and they burn It's called passing the child through the fire. Just a fancy way of saying they said So I say all that to say if you're gonna have an be sure you get prayed over afterwards because it is in fact a ritual. Only a lot of people don't know that.
Why do many of our politicians and some of the most powerful elites in the world meet at a place called Bohemian Grove where they do mock human sacrifices to a giant statue of an owl, a statue of ancient god of child sacrifice put on display in Rome. So they erected a statue of Mola, a deity that people used to sacrifice to. These are the times that we are in. To the spiritual bankruptcy and destitution of a world without Christianity. And very powerful people have been meeting in the woods of California, dressed in robes, putting on mock sacrifices to owl gods. And people who point it out must just be conspiracy theorists. Here's a photo captured from Bohemian Grove of ex-presidents Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon, one of ex-president Bill Clinton's advisors, David Gergen. And then you countered them by saying, hey, I don't run around in the woods naked. I, I am a, a happy member of the Bohemian Grove. Have you been there for the ceremony with the cremation of care? Uh, frankly, that's, uh, that, uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Who was actually able to sneak inside and get video exposing the ritual. Pretty well documented that people run around naked. To me, Bohemian Grove is probably a way to compromise people. This whole Democrat-Republican deal, and it's all the same people behind closed doors, but it's two different management teams of the same system. Powerful people joining a club put in compromising positions sounds like Epstein's list, which we still haven't gotten by the way, was something they call the cremation of care. We sit down and take part in this sick, bizarre mock body having a conversation with this demon. This is what these powerful elites get together and do behind closed doors. <laughs> in the Hillary emails actually made mention to Moloch. Why did she end up burning 30,000 emails? It is all being exposed because it is time. Jesus will have the victory. But it's still murder. Says who? Says all of creation, James. The creator creates and we destroy and we do all of it through you. We always have. Did you forget your history, Jimmy? Even in ancient times, the archdemon Moloch was celebrated by tossing to flaming bonfires, accompanied, of course, by the beating of drums to drown out the screaming. Later on, they erected a giant bronze statue with outstretched arms kindling fires beneath the palms. And when they toss a little into those open palms, they'd flinch at the red-hot metal, but then they'd willingly roll themselves off into the flames. What does any of that have to do with me? Oh, nothing, James! Especially since the priests now wear surgical scrubs. The killing takes place in the wounds, so there's no screaming to be heard anyway. And the remains are tossed into gas-fired crematoriums. No, James, no, 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 no. There's no parallel whatsoever to you. Can you imagine the agony the carpenter feels when we rip pieces inside its own mother's womb? Because that's what we do, James. You and us. We do that together. The name Moloch is often associated with an ancient god that was worshipped through the practice of ice involving the youth cultures. If we were to interpret the name Moloch based on this meaning, we would need to explore the significance of the name itself. The name Moloch is derived from a root that can mean king or ruler and or messenger. In the context of human race, the sacrificing of Moloch is a symbolic representation of the dangerous act of giving up important qualities such as understanding, which is symbolized by sons, and wisdom, which is symbolized by daughters, for misguided beliefs or to appease and gain favor with the perceived ruling power. Interpreting Moloch in this context suggests a warning against making sacrifices to external powers that demand submission or appeasement. It symbolizes the dangers of giving up one's essential qualities or potential for the sake of perceived authority or power, especially if such actions go against higher principles and moral values. The sacrifice to Moloch was viewed negatively and those practices were condemned in biblical texts as it involved forsaking values and principles for something that was considered destructive or false. It's a cautionary tale against exchanging vital qualities for practices that go against higher principles and morality. The name Moloch is often associated with Why did I look up that name? Oh.
man. Damn. That's why y'all gotta follow me on Twitch, man. I can't be doing this every day, man. So for real, we, we we need to do happy and uplifting TikToks, man, because this right here is dark. Damn, man. I got this. It's dark. You know, it's this is pure evil disturbing we were supposed to be looking up the red sea let me go back to the red sea man let's get back on that damn drop your thoughts below Let's talk about confusion for a second. The plan was to take a place called Egypt, put it into another land, tell people that it was from original place Egypt, tell them that they are from another land and that the land is Africa because they have similar color to these people. So this confusion, what is causing the problem in the world today, America is the land of Shem. This is where Moses, it is actions, this is where the Red Sea is, and I will prove it, is what he's saying. California used to be an island. We know this because of the basin that we see that is connected in Colorado, Idaho, Utah, and Nevada. This is the basin of the ancient Red Sea location. Not only that, but between California and America, you have what is called Mar Varmajo which means the Red Sea. The name Sierra Nevada means no covered mountain range. The water would have to go somewhere when it melts. So it would go into the Great Basin. So this is why they had to build all those dams to redirect the water. Dam published by dictionary.com. A barrier to obstruct the flows of water, especially one of the earth masonry built across a stream or river, a body of water confined by a dam, any barrier resembling a dam to furnish with a dam a structure confined with a dam to stop block up. This is when a dam project was started. The destruction of major CVP facilities began in 1938 with breaking of ground of the Sasta Dam on the Sacramento River nearing Reading in North Ca Ca California. Over the next five decades, the CVP was expanded into a system of 20 dams and reservoirs that together can hold nearly 12 million acre feet. All these dams are created so they can stop and redirect where the water goes so they can empty out the area called the Nevada region. Hmm, Colorado. Let's take a look at what this means. Colorado's name has an origin in the Spanish language as a word of colored red. The name was chosen in Colorado as a territory in 1861 by Congress became a state in 1876. It's just like Lowell said, they were busy. They built a dam after dam after dam after dam after dam. But the children, but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. So it looks like they're trying to, if I'm, let me get this straight. They made all these dams across the United States to cover up the original Red Sea. Is that, that's the information I'm getting is that they covered up all these different, they put all these different dams everywhere just so they can, cover up the red sea that is almost that is fascinating all right guys that's all i got for today's video if you made it this far the code word is california type california in the chat so i know you're real i'm gonna dive more into this red sea man i just got to this video real late so we're going to have to dive in more to it tomorrow. Um, 
I appreciate you guys. If you're watching this and you haven't followed me on Twitch yet, I highly recommend you do so because I do stream in the mornings now. Um, <clears throat> I, I was actually trying to get a job uh, so I can work in the mornings and it didn't work out for me. So, you know, maybe this is a blessing in disguise. So I'm going all in on my mornings to streaming on Twitch. Um, I know a lot of people don't really play games like that, but I can do more than play games. We can play games a little bit, dive into videos on Twitch, you know, just be like a variety type thing is what I'm aiming for. Um, or we can just get it in on some good games. But um, nevertheless, I'm, I am going to be there Mondays uh, every day on Twitch between uh, around 8, 10 a.m. is when I start. And I stop around 1, 2, 2 p.m. So I look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, we actually did it today. A couple people came in and, you know, we chopped it up. We talked, man. Uh, it's just another way for us to hang out. Um, it's more uncut on Twitch. You know, I don't got to worry about, you know, as much as I have to here. But we're still going to be doing lives on this channel. Still pumping out these boys daily. And I thank you guys. Um, check the link in the description in the comments on my twitch and i appreciate you guys and i'm gonna see y'all tomorrow same time same place peace out